All right, so if you don't know, this is Low Level Learning. Low Level Learning is one of my favorite producers of content. And not only that, great streamer, based takes, wears glasses, so he's likely smarter than you. If he carries a clipboard and wears glasses, he will somehow intersect the, the full ability to appear ultimately smart. And thus, I will actually get imposter syndrome being around him. It's that good. It's that good. On March 21st, 1986, Ray Cox drove to the East Texas Cancer Treatment Center where he was set to undergo a regularly scheduled treatment. Oh man, is this gonna make me sad? Ray would receive 180 rads of radiation for a tumor developing in his back, just oh. left of his spine. Five months later, this gentleman was dead. The East Texas Cancer Center incident was just one of six radiation-related injuries and deaths from 1985 to 1987. The common theme in all these events Same is the Act 25. Like, I just can't imagine... Oh my god, I don't even want to talk. I just, like, just think about my beautiful wife or something like that having that happen too, where it's like a medical oopsie-daisy with dividing by zero or some shit. Man, I feel like I would just... I would just lose it. Which is also another thing to think about. Everything that is being used, remember, somebody like me or you programmed that machine. It's actually kind of terrifying once you think about that. It's not easy to treat cancer. Treating cancer effectively has been a hard problem in the field of medicine for several decades. Is that a chat GPT image? It is. The medical industry spends... You're welcome for the screen tearing. Oh my goodness, a fly just landed on me. We're gonna end this fly's life in three, two, one. Oh, got away. The fly that got away. Billions every year in research and development, attempting to make cancer treatment more effective and less invasive. In the mid-1970s, the Atomic Energy of Canada Limited Company, or ah! AECL, developed away. a radical new double-pass concept for electron acceleration. The double-pass accelerator allowed new radiology machines to be more compact and perform two kinds of radiotherapy in one machine x-ray therapy, and electron therapy. This two-in-one package made the newly developed Therac 25 extremely attractive to hospitals, as it was easier and cheaper than the original Therac 6 and Therac 20. It's called the Therac 25? Why wasn't it called the Therac 26? I mean, they had a 20 and a six, and it was both models together. Why wasn't it the 26? Windows 21 confirmed. <laughs> Off by one air. Here, we here it comes. The Therac 25 was the first radiation therapy machine controlled entirely by software. Oh, man. Previous versions used software to make the interfaces more convenient, but still had <laughs> hardware interlocks to operate the emitters. On March 21st, 1986, Ray Cox entered the East Texas Treatment Center to receive his 180 rads. He was taken to his room where he laid under the Therac 25 face down. The operator entered the control bay where she quickly entered the prescription data to the Therac 25 user interface. Couldn't mess this up. Honestly, this looks perfect. Um, this, this seems absolutely easy and definitely non-oopsie-daisy proof. I mean, this is perfectly, perfectly straightforward. Perfectly straightforward. Imagine this is what It'll never, it'll never mess up. Dude, I know. Dude, imagine if this was your life was dependent on this input. Oh my goodness, I'd be terrified. Because x-ray therapy was more common, the operator accidentally input X for x-ray. She quickly noticed, and having operated this machine for more than 500 patients, very quickly changed the X to an E for electron therapy, which was prescribed for Ray Cox. After confirming the inputs were verified and the screen read beam ready, she hit B for beam on to begin the treatment. Oh my goodness, this is making me so uncomfortable. I am so uncomfortable. Cuz I like my brain's already trying to run like what what's what's the thing? Since the beam was already ready, therefore it's already set to X and it just doesn't do. Did you just not do enough is the energy too high? Like what is the, what is the thing, right? What is the thing that after several seconds of confusion, the machine shut down and displayed malfunction 54 on the screen. If that ever happens and the patient isn't immediately escorted from that room, covered in lead and, 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 and dodging all the x-ray lasers, I don't know what would be like. I would never have 
That's crazy. If that if they if they if they didn't get him out of there because of that, what the hell? The screen also displayed a treatment pause error, which normally came from a low priority operator error that was easy to fix. The only documentation, though, presented about Malfunction 54 indicated that there was a dose input 2 error, something an AECL technician would later indicate meant that the patient was given either too high or too low of a dosage. The screen indicated that the patient had only received six rads so far, and while the operator had ordered 202, the operator pressed P to unpause the treatment. While all this occurred in the control room, Ray laid alone in the operating room. Normally, the two zones were connected by audio and video, but during this session, the video monitor had turned off and the speakers had been broken for some time. Okay, first off, if I saw a keyboard that looked like this, I'd have many questions before getting radiation. Okay, just throwing that out there. But how in the world are you allowed to operate one of those things without working video and audio to begin with? Like, how's that even a thing? How's that not, how's, how, how's that not a thing? After receiving the first attempt at treatment, Ray later recounted a feeling of electric shock or that hot coffee had been poured down his back. Being his ninth treatment, Ray knew something was wrong, so he got up from the table at the exact same time the operator unpaused the Therac-25. He ran to the door of the control room screaming and pounded on the door, visibly shaken and upset. Simulations after the incident estimate that Ray Cox received not 180 rads, but somewhere between 16,000 and 25,000. Ray Cox in the following weeks would feel excruciating pain in his neck and shoulders, suffer from several types of paralysis, and eventually die to complications five months later. Five other patients in the US and Canada would suffer a similar fate. What could have gone so terribly wrong in software to cause a man to lose his life? You know, I, I harp on unit testing and coverage and things like that. I'd say that this is a really good place to just just be out of control with every kind of coverage possible. And there's people today, remember this, there's people today that program airplanes and radiation machines and all this stuff. Like, it's actually really just scary to think about how many machines that could just destroy your life are programmed just by people, you know? And at some point there is an unknown situation that's going to, that's going to happen. Several assumptions about software, poor software engineering practices, and safety design choices in the Therac-25 led to these catastrophic events that were all rooted in bugs in software. In the 1980s and early 1990s, there wasn't much knowledge about how software worked outside of a small community of programmers. There was an attitude in the public that once the code worked, software was unable to fail. None of these guys were gamers. You could tell right away, none of them were gamers. People that have that attitude never played a game ever in their lifetime. Now all you gotta do is play any game, any AAA game, like any of them, and you'll be like, wow, this is a piece of shit. How many people worked on this? Once the code performed the function it was able to perform, there was no more work to do. Nothing could go wrong. There were no edge cases. The fact that people in chat right now are kind of debating me, every, I can see it over and over again. Just wait. It gets like it's. It sounds like this is gonna get real bad. I'm. I, I'm already having like an emotionally hard time even watching this, just because this is atypical of any content I ever ever consume. I don't like. I don't. I don't like. I don't like it. I don't like it. Stop saying just wait. I. I could. I'm, I'm barely of this, holding on here. AECL allowed a single hobbyist programmer to program the Therac 25 alone in PDP 11 assembly. Get the get the hell out of here. Get out. You what? What? What is what? What the hell's a hobbyist? Like was this guy like an electrical engineer that they're just like, "Oh, by the way, could you just whip up some codes for us?" One person coded alone in assembly. <laughs> I mean, now that I think about that, green screen was incredibly impressive. Like, can we all just take a moment and just remember that that UI he built? Okay, the the, the UI was actually incredible considering what was going on. Okay, just one dude. I know it was usual then, but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't make it somehow better. Okay, the UI was great. 
I don't think the UI killed people. I think it's obviously the buggy program that messed up with the UI. I'm just saying the UI itself was good, okay? You know, people always people are always like, you know, it's just greed. I, I'm not sure if it was greed this time. I think it was obviously a massive misunderstanding of software, but I, I, I'm, I'm just completely shocked that anybody at any point in time, I, mean, I guess I never lived, I never was a software developer in the 80s, so I don't know what people were thinking back then, but I, cannot, I can't imagine being like, this thing shoots lasers in which can kill people. Let's just throw somebody on it. Like that just can't be real, right? This. Well, yeah, lasers, right? I, I don't mean like. You gotta remember, it's all part of a spectrum, right? What I don't. What what particles come out of a, a radiation? I don't know what particles come out of it. I don't know how. I'm not a. I'm not a chemist. I'm not a physicist. I don't know these things. Damn it! Okay, I I program in TypeScript. Okay, I don't know this. I just know that it, it shit comes out of there. It's effectively a laser. It's just a laser you don't see. It's not like Star Wars, okay? I'm not talking about like a laser gun from your childhood. I'm talking about like real lasers, like real, real shit that actually hurts you, okay? Software cannot fail attitude bled into all aspects of the engineering process. The design of the Therac 25 was unnecessarily complex. And when questioned by the FDA about how much the Therac had been tested, hand set upper culminator, keyboard handler, data entry, offset parameters, mode energy, mode energy offset, MIOS, calibrated, calibration tables, reset, date, in, uh, date, int. you don't even get that I and date int. Uh, date int, that date didn't happen anytime when I've been working on it. That date didn't happen anytime. Setup done, setup test, patient treatment, pause treatment, terminate treatment, date, time, ID changes. The AECL representative reported that the Thera 25 underwent 2700 hours of testing when pressed for more information and data representative backpedaled and said 2700 hours of testing by the operators using the machine it was later revealed that's not testing dog that's production that ain't that ain't the test environment well the therac 25 was never tested until it arrived and was assembled at the hospitals where it underwent minimal system testing to prove that it functioned and nothing more. They literally tested and prod a laser gun. Okay, by the way, the guy that keeps spamming something about the CIA doing that, if you're ruining the ending and this turns out to be a CIA, CIA psyop, that's crazy. But if it doesn't say that, okay, I know it's, it's, it's funny to do an Alex Jones gasm, okay? We all laugh about it, but let's slow it down a little bit, okay? CIA guy, okay, CIA guy. Can we just calm down a little bit? Code that was modified between the Therac 20 and the Therac 25 underwent zero regression testing. And the Therac 25 didn't come with any system level documentation about the errors so that an operator could handle them when encountered. So what happened to Ray Cox? Inside the Therac 25's code, a task ran that executed the treatment. Inside that task, a variable called T phase controlled which one of eight subroutines was being ran at any given time. When the operator first accidentally entered X ray mode, the T phase variable quickly moved on to phase three, or the setup treatment phase. During this time, the X ray energy specified on the user interface was used to look up and program a configuration to the digital to analog converter which would be used to emit the radiation energy to the patient. Also during this time, magnets were put into motion that would be used to bend the X-ray beam and control its output. It took about eight seconds to move this magnet. During this eight seconds, the task would ignore additional input from the user as the data entry task was not being ran. Because the operator in this case was skilled, and able to change X-ray mode to electron mode in under eight seconds, the changes to the prescription were not observed by the machine. Instead of receiving electron radiation as prescribed, Ray received X-ray radiation at electron radiation doses without the proper bending and mediation by the magnets. This error- Damn. I mean, it feels so obvious since I get to look back. ...is known as a race condition. In a race condition, logic in a program depends on a data location that can be written to by two separate threads. The race condition exists because there is no logic controlling 
who is allowed to write to that data at any given time. The race happens when the logic executed on the data depends on what piece of code gets there first. In the Act 25, the race condition caused the data entry to occur before the patient setup task was able to read it, causing a misconfiguration in the machine that was not accounted for previously by the programmer. Oh my goodness. You know, I think often about what it would be like working at a place like Tesla or, or uh, you know, NASA or any of these places where you're like programming real systems that if they mess up, people get hurt. And I just think about like how sick I would feel programming. Like I'd be constantly freaking out. Jeez, Louise, I can't even imagine trying to program an x-ray machine in, in assembly. How did he even test it if the first time ever tested was like assembled somewhere? It's crazy. This would not have been a problem in previous versions of the Therac where hardware interlocks were there to make sure that these levels of radiation did not come out. But to make the Therac cheaper, these hardware interlocks were removed and the system depended entirely on software checks to make sure this didn't happen. Why would you do that? I cannot imagine a hardware lock being that expensive. Aren't they selling? I assume these machines are like a kajillion dollars each. And you're telling me that you can't throw a little bit of hardware on that? That's crazy. In code, it should be accepted that bugs will happen. Ones that you're aware of and ones that you could never predict. Incompetence plus greed, one of the most dangerous combos of all time. It is just super, super dangerous. Classic corporate greed. Well, you also had, you, I mean, you also had just sheer incompetence, right? It wasn't just greed. They, they, I mean, if, if what he's saying is true, so I, I don't know. I don't know what the 80s was like, okay? I don't know what the 80s was like, so I have no idea. I was, I was zero to four years old in the 80s, so I have no idea. And so I don't know if this idea that software will never fail was a mindset people had, right? If people had that mindset, why would you have hardware locks? Real talk. If you actually genuinely believe that, why would you have them? I have no idea. It seems crazy to me because to me, obviously, my heart, mind, and soul knows that software fails nonstop, right? But it seems it, – it feels very – it's always very easy to look back and blame people. But, man, this shit's so messed up. It's just so messed up. I don't even know what to do with this. It's so messed up. Rigorous code testing should always occur, especially in systems where lives depend on software safety. If the Therac 25 code was tested – Ray Cox might still be alive. 